Alright, so, a few days ago, we made a video talking about the same source. Today we're talking about the Missing Curfew Podcast, a podcast hosted by three former NHLers. Jimmy Hayes, you've got Shane O'Brien, and you have Scotty Upshaw. In the most previous video where we discussed these guys as a source, we talked about the proposed trade that Jimmy Hayes was talking about on the podcast, where he was hearing from his insiders, because, you know, as a former NHL athlete, you probably have a few insiders here and there, that the New York Rangers were getting prepared to trade the first overall pick to the Ottawa Senators in exchange for not only the third overall pick, but Brady Kachuk as well. And this was a video that we talked about the rumor, we spoke about how ridiculous it seemed, and, you know, I didn't want to say anything about the validity of the source or whatever, I was just kind of saying, you know what, just the way this is phrased, just the overall magnitude of the idea, I don't believe it. Well, we have ourselves another trade rumor coming from the same podcast, and the only reason I'm giving it so much attention here is because it literally is coming from NHL athletes, or at least former NHL athletes, like this isn't just some random bub on Twitter spitting out stuff that he made up in his basement with the intention of getting some extra clout. This is not that. This is legitimate, or at least according to the source, it's legitimate hearsay from people who are around the league and who know people who know people. So, today we're talking about the Calgary Flames, and the Philadelphia Flyers too, because this is a trade idea that was brought up, and apparently is something that's going to happen. Jimmy Hayes was on the pod, he was talking about Johnny Hockey, he was talking about Jakub Voracek, and for the most part, he kind of introduced the idea here with a little bit of a joke. He said, Johnny Hockey, you gotta pack your bags and head over to Philly to play with my brother. And his brother, obviously, it's Kevin Hayes, 28 years old, he's a guy making a crazy big contract. Jimmy Hayes is two years older than him, but indeed he is out of the league. So, he talked about this, and then he mentioned something on the actual details of a trade later. Let's take a look at the transcription over here. He says this, I'm hearing it's going to be Johnny Hockey and something else, I'm not sure what, to Philly for Voracek and Gostaspair. But that's a lot of money for Calgary to be taking on, so there's got to be a juicy prospect coming from Philly, too. Now, okay, let's talk about each of these three individual pieces first and foremost. Johnny Gaudreau is 27 years old, and yeah, that's right, he's 27. Can you believe that? He's 27, man! I always think of this guy as a guy who is under the age of 24 whenever I think of Johnny Gaudreau, but like, he's 27 years old, he's making $6.75 million for two more seasons, and he doesn't have a modified no trade, he doesn't have a no trade or any of that stuff, he is just free. Free to be traded, free to be sent down to the AHL, whatever, doesn't have any of that stuff. Meanwhile, Jakub Voracek, he's a guy who the Flyers honestly are paying a lot of money. He's getting paid 8.25 until 2024. He as well does not have a no-move clause or a no-trade clause at this moment, so it puts him in the reins of actually being available to be traded as well. Not to mention Shane Gostaspair, the other asset mentioned in this trade. There are no restrictions on his contract either, but he's making $4.5 million until 2023. He's a guy who the Flyers have been so open about being on the trade block over the past few months that his name at this point just kind of feels like a name you throw in for the sake of adding some value. You know where you have a GM mode trade and it's not going through and you add extra players and picks and prospects over top what you already have just so you can get a deal that goes through? Gostas Bear kind of feels like that add-on piece, and I get that he was okay in the postseason, but... Seriously, for the past few months, it's been the worst kept secret with the Flyers organization that Shane Gostaspair is on the block. Oh, so surprising. But Jimmy Hayes does have a point. If you take a look at just the mathematical numbers of it, Voracek, 8.25. You have Gostaspair, 4.5. A total of $12.75 million in exchange for Johnny Gaudreau, who is making 6.75. That's an extra $6 million on the cap, 
and for a much longer amount of time too, because Gaudreau, he expires in 2022, Vortrex got that until 2024, and Goss Despair has 2023. So taking a look at this idea here on both sides, what exactly are the flames getting here? Because if Jimmy Hayes' analysis is correct, and there would be another pick or whatever added on to the other side of this deal, where the Flyers are giving an incentive prospect for the Flames to take on that money then it really depends who exactly that prospect is. You have Bobby Brink, who is a very, very good USHL-turned-NCAA point producer. His skating is kind of questionable, but everything else around that, man, that guy is good at producing points. You have Cam York, very good US NTDP defenseman last year, who played with the University of Michigan Wolverines this year. And sure, he wasn't the same kind of caliber defenseman like Quinn Hughes, who ended up leaving the Wolverines organization the year before, he still is a freshman turning sophomore who is going to become a good player down the line. I'm a big believer in Cam York. But aside from that, though, you have a few other guys as well. I've said this in a few videos before that I'm a very big believer in the Flyers U25 core. Morgan Frost, Joel Farabee, even the other guys, the depth pieces like Ronnie Adder, etc. These are some very good prospects, and... Not saying that one of them being added onto a Voracek and a Goss Despair is going to be enough to land you a Johnny Gaudreau, but, you know, it's interesting to think about. As for the Flyers, they're in a position where a lot of Flyers fans, I saw Flyers fans talking about this trade idea because, of course, it's literally Kevin Hayes' brother talking about it, so interesting notes there. I saw a lot of Flyers fans saying that this is a big price to pay for essentially getting smaller on the team. Because it's no secret, Johnny Gaudreau is not a big guy. Vorchuk, on the other hand, he's a pretty big guy. When it comes to the roster that you're putting out there on the ice, what you have is pretty much just no more Vorchuk, no more Goss to spare. You slot Gaudreau into the top line. Flyers fans were joking around saying all of a sudden you have another undersized forward who wasn't able to score in the postseason. Okay, I get it. Funny jokes. But from that point of view, it really doesn't make all too much sense for me. Like, sure, you're saving up some money, but... The Flyers, with the contracts they have been signing and the way that they've been going as an organization, money to me doesn't seem like the biggest of their concerns. To me, if I had to label the Flyers, I see them as a team that was trying to go for it all this year, that was trying to go and win the Stanley Cup. And there's no indication to me that says that next year, their goal should be any different. They've got to re-sign Philip Myers, he's pretty much the only valuable RFA player they have. And aside from that, you know... What you're trying to do is capitalize on the one more year you have Carter Hart on an entry-level contract and try to win it all in the process while you still have $6 million in cap space and while you're still in a position to actually be good. You can say all you want about Johnny Gaudreau being a more valuable, more offensively productive piece to your team than Jakub Voracek was, but at the end of the day, they're kind of equal players. I mean, taking a look at the point production, it's really similar. Gaudreau had 58 points in 70 games. Voracek had 56 points in 69 games. So it's the same. As for the playoffs, well, Gaudreau had 7 points in 10 games, a point seven points per game. Voracek had 9 points in 15 games. So it's a point six. It's a very small difference. Pretty much, you're not really improving by the margin that a trade like this would imply that you would be. So, to me, it doesn't really make all too much sense from the Philly point of view either. Which is why I'm also kind of labeling this as a ridiculous trade idea as well. Just kind of a blockbuster trade where all the big names are being thrown together. Again, I don't want to doubt anybody on the Missing Curfew podcast. I don't want to disrespect what they do because obviously to have a podcast as a former NHLer seems like a pretty good life to live. I certainly would love to be Shane O'Brien, Upshaw, or Hayes in that position. But the idea itself that was discussed, I do kind of have my doubts about it. But of course, you know, if anything like this actually happens, then I guess we have the bragging rights here to say, you know what, we covered it before it went down. Thank you so much, Jimmy Hayes, for coming out here with the information. But if it doesn't happen, then hey, it's just another idea. It's another shot in the dark that ended up going nowhere. At the very least, we have ourselves a very interesting topic discussion over here. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea here. Johnny Gaudreau and maybe something else for Shane Goss to spare and Jakub Voracek, if not, maybe at a prospect over there as well on the Flyers side. Do you like this idea? Do you not? If you're a Flyers fan, what do you think? If you're a Flames fan, what do you think? Would you accept this? And if not, what would you change about this idea that would allow you to actually say, you know what, I think that's a pretty good deal? I know for me, if I'm the Flames and I actually want to start rebuilding, taking on money, doesn't really seem like the best thing, but if you're getting a nice prospect back too, 
I would, at the very least, consider it, depending on the prospect, of course. If it's like Morgan Frost and Therapy, then my goodness, yes, give me that. But... You know, obviously, that's just me spitting. So, talk to me in the comments. Really like, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's for us, and I and bye. <laughs>